Welcome back to Zone for Geeks. My name is Casey, and in this episode, we are going to be setting up an SSL VPN so remote users can access our network. Now, if you see my other videos, you will notice that I finally got around to updating the firmware on my firewall, so it might look a little different than my last videos, but I am still using the same firewall as before. In order to set up an SSL VPN, we need to do four things in our firewall. We need to assign IP addresses to the users who are connecting. We need to set up users. We need to configure the SSL VPN settings. And then we need to make a rule to allow that traffic into our network. The FortiGate firewall already comes with a pre-configured address object. You see that here. You can edit the object and even have more than one. As you see, the pre-configured object only has about 10 addresses. So that is the maximum number of concurrent users we can have. If you need more, you will need to edit the default object or create a new one. One thing to note is that your IP address given to users should be an IP scheme that is not likely to be used by your users on their home network. So avoid things like 192.168.1 or 10.1.1.1. Try for unconventional IP addresses. Failure to do this might result in connection issues. I'm going to use the default address object, so there's nothing for me to do here, and instead I'm going to go ahead and set up my users. You can do this by creating a single user, group, or if you're a large organization, you probably want to set up an OU in your active directory. In my case, I am just creating one user, so I'm going to create a local account. We're going to do this by going to user and authentication, then user definitions. Now I want to create a new user, so I click on create new, local user, and then next. I create a username and password. I am going to set up two-factor authentication using the FORTA token. Now for my firewall, it comes with two FORTI tokens. Simply select the drop-down menu and choose the token to be assigned to the user. Next, you want to enter an email address. This user will get an email with a QR code that they scan using the FORTA token app on their phones. As a side note, there is an option to send an SMS text message. I've never been able to get this to work, and since email works just fine, I haven't put much effort into getting that working. After you hit next, then submit, check your email for your QR code. It might take a few minutes and you should check your spam folder if you don't see it. Now that we have our user account, we are going to configure our SSL VPN portal. To do that, navigate to VPN, then SSL VPN portal. You should have some pre-configured settings set up, but if you don't, click on Create New. If you already have a pre-configured tunnel, click on it and select Edit. You'll want to copy the settings you see on your screen. The name can be anything you want. You want to enable tunnel mode and set Enable based on policy destination. Under Source IP Pools, this is going to be where we created our address objects. As I said before, you can have more than one. In my case, I am going to leave it as the default. Make sure that the rest of your settings match mine and then click OK. Next, we want to go to SSL VPN settings. You can copy my settings here if you wish. The Listen On Interface option is where my VPN connections are going to be going to. In this case, they are going to my WAN connection. Make a note of the port number as you will need it to make the connection. In the blue box, it will show you the IP and port that is needed to connect. If you've seen my other videos, you will know that my WAN IP is a private IP address and not a public one. Yours might be a public IP address. We want to automatically assign IP addresses to new users and then click Apply. The last thing we need to do in our firewall is set the policy. As I've stated before, I like to use names that make sense, so I am setting my policy name as SSL VPN to LAN. Our incoming interface will be our SSL VPN tunnel. Our outgoing interface is going to be my primary switch, but you might want to change this based on your own setup. For our source, we are going to allow all connections, but we also need to set up at least one user or one user group. In this case, I just have the one user, so that's what I'm going to select. Our destination is going to be our internal LAN. 
You might be wondering what the difference is between setting our outgoing interface to our main switch, but still setting our destination to our internal LAN. This is because a network can have multiple VLANs, or you might want to allow access to a single machine, such as a file server. We are going to set our services to all, and finally disable NAT. Once you click on OK, then your firewall is ready to receive your VPN connections. Now I am going to switch over to my laptop where we will use the 40 client software to set up and test our VPN connection. Everyone who is going to be connected to your VPN will need the 40 client software. There will be a link to it in the description below. Installing it is just like installing any other software. Since I already have it installed, I am going to go ahead and launch it. Once we have the software launched, we are going to click on remote access, then configure VPN. Give your connection any name. Under Remote Gateway, this will be your WAN IP address. If you don't know what your WAN IP address is, just Google what is my IP address and it should pop right up on your screen. Next we want to check Customized Port and enter the port number we specified on our firewall. Then click Save. Enter your credentials that you created on your firewall, then click connect. I should also note that my laptop is connected to a cellular hotspot, so it is not on the same network that I am trying to connect to. After a few seconds, you will be prompted to enter your token number from your 40 token app. As you can see, we are now connected to our network. I can pull up command prompt and you can see I have two different IP addresses. One for my connection to my hotspot and the other given by my firewall for my VPN connection. I can also ping my firewall and ping my media server. If you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have a comment or question, leave it below and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.